recent book is 100 Heartbeats, The Race to Save the Earth's Most Endangered Species, published by Rodale Books in 2010. Originally from Norwell Matters. Um, so we'll say hello to, uh, to Jeff and then uh, we'll, we'll open it up for, for questions. Thank you. South Shore and reminded me of my days as a grad student living in Deerfield, Mass. Of course, the odor is different. You know, when I lift my window now, I live on a little island in Massachusetts. I smell the ocean and, and that wonderful breeze. And I remember going home after a long work and uh, at grad school and opening my window when I got back and smelling a lot of cow shit. So. <laughs> But, um, so I always loved animals, and the day I knew I became a naturalist, and I'll, I often tell the story, is when I was six years old, and, you know, we lived in Quincy, my dad was a Boston police officer, we lived in a really tough neighborhood, such a beautiful part of our state, there's so many interesting things happening in this part of Massachusetts when it comes to ecology and wildlife. We're seeing species here that haven't been around here in many, many years. We're seeing fisheries, trout fisheries. And some areas are doing really well and presenting new challenges. It's a cool part of the world that people forget about. And, uh, and I think it really should be on everybody's radar. Yes, sir. When you were a kid, did you bring little creatures into the house? Yeah, my mom thought I was either be a famous scientist or a famous criminal. <laughs> and uh, whenever I would come home, I mean, my mom would literally make me empty out the pockets. Because every time my mom would walk in the room, it was, she was like, was that here before? Because I had dozens of, I, I had a falcon, I had, a, I worked at a wildlife rehab center, so I had all these animals that I was helping to take care of. I had snakes, turtles, and uh, everything basically in a 12 by 12 foot bedroom. And, by the time I was, you know, 13 years old, I was getting paid 100 bucks to go to a nursing home or a birthday party and, and all these sorts of things. And, and, and then as I got a little older, in high school, I had a chance, uh, I worked for a scientist, and I used to help, he was a herpetologist, I used to help him take care of his snakes. And when I was like 15 years old or 16 years old, he took me down to a rainforest on this research expedition, and that was it light bulb clicked on. I said, I love, this is it. I want to spend my life working in rainforest. We became very active. I was a very sort of out-of-the-box kid. Uh, by the time I was 17 and 18, I was spending most of my time in the tropical rainforest. Yes? Um, what is your feeling as to uh, having pets in the home? Do you believe that it's ethical? Or do you feel like in certain situations it's okay? And well, like what kind of pets? Um, like, like cats? Like having cats or dogs or hermit crabs or whatever else people have. I don't, yeah, I, 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 the battle I choose to fight is really the battle about habitat species. Unless it's an animal that's been taken out of the wild, which, which was, was a big problem in the 1970s, animals, turtles and snakes, being brought up, it's still an issue today, exotics, especially an issue with the black market trade, the illegal trade of animal parts, $20 billion a year industry. You know, that I'm thoroughly opposed to and, and actually have been on the front lines fighting that. I just did a big project with the State Department and, and Secretary Clinton about uh, working with embassies in these areas that are dealing with the exploitation of elephants for their ivory and rhinos for their horns. You know, as for cats, humans and cats and humans and dogs, we've been together for about 10,000 years. We have a long history together. And, you know, domesticated cats, don't always do that well on their own. And when they do, they do too well to wipe out all our native birds and things like that. And dogs, it's the same way. I mean, we, whether you like it or not, we've carved out a long, almost a symbiotic relationship with these creatures. Um, as partners, as resources, as friends. So I'm not opposed to it. I, I'm more opposed to inhumane treatment of animals. I, we have a cat, and we love our cat. But it's a rescue cat. It's a cat we got at a pound or someone dropped up at our door and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, we have chickens. We love our chickens, especially when they're laying eggs. We're loving them a little less because they're now in like 
chicken, chicken a paws, they're not laying any more eggs.